talking about Indiana Jones on the channel. It's been a while. It's been a long time since I talked about Indiana Jones. I talked about Raiders of the Lost Ark last year. This year, I'm going to continue my series of Indiana Jones reviews leading up to the Dial of Destiny at the end of June. And today, we're going to be talking about the second Indiana Jones movie, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Temple of Doom sees Indiana Jones seeking out the Shakari Stones and taking on the Maharaja and a villain named Molaram. When it comes to Temple of Doom, I think a lot of people... And I could use this analogy loosely because now I don't think it's the case. But when you look at the original three Indiana Jones movies, I should say, because I think almost unanimously everybody agrees that Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls, the worst one. But in terms of the first three, Temple of Doom is really seen as the bastard child of the Indiana Jones series. And for quite a while, I felt the same way. It was definitely my least favorite of these original three. There's something that clicked in my mind, the last couple of watches of Temple of Doom when I was watching the Indiana Jones movies through again. And I don't know what it was, but I love this movie. Fuck it. I really don't care. This is as good as Raiders. This is as good as Crusade. I said it. Feel free to bitch me out in the comments, but I love Temple of Doom. A lot of people take issue with the one location setting for an Indiana Jones movie, and that is this movie essentially it's not a globe trotting adventure for a lot of people it may not have that sense of fun that that globe trotting type of adventure has for me though i feel like if you're doing an indiana jones movie there's gonna be situations where he's not globe trotting so it makes perfect sense like this acts as a prequel to raiders of the lost ark so we get to see what he was up to before raiders and trying to find the ark of the covenant and Sure, it's one location, but I feel like that's logical. I feel like that's realistic. That's not something that I feel as if is a detriment to the film. There's so many fun action scenes in this movie, and I'll come looping around back at the end of one of them. The opening in Club Obi-Wan was always really fun. It really sets the tone that this is going to be a different type of tone from Raiders of the Lost Ark. For most of this movie, you get this campy tone. And then towards the middle, when Indiana Jones discovers the Temple of Doom, it becomes this voodoo, ritualistic, darker themed type of movie. And I think it really affected Spielberg in the end. Temple of Doom is the movie that inspired the PG-13 rating. Spielberg had suggested something in between PG and R because there were a lot of complaints that this movie was too violent. Look. Say what you want. I know people, I know Mullah Ram rips people's hearts out. The Maharaja stabs voodoo dolls of people and that causes people to get hurt. But I never feel like it's as dark as it actually is. I feel like when people talk about Temple of Doom and that it's the dark Indiana Jones movie and the more violent Indiana Jones movie, I feel like they're exaggerating a lot because it's not really until you get to the Temple of Doom where you get to the rituals and the voodoo magic where all of that comes into play, and it's only for about a good 20 minute chunk of the movie. The rest of the movie, I think, has this really campy, pulpy tone to it that I completely adore. Look, I know Indiana Jones isn't a superhero, but I can buy the fact that he can go tobogganing out of a plane that's doing a nosedive into a mountain about to crash, and he's going to go tobogganing on an inflatable raft with Short Round and Willie down a snowy mountain and land safely without that inflatable raft popping somehow. I don't know how that happened. But see, it seems like that that make me really appreciate the filmmaking and the effort that Spielberg put into this movie a lot more because there's scenes like that that you just don't see in an Indiana Jones movie and I feel like in movies today movies just don't have the balls to go there anymore that's something you don't see too much of because now it's just like well no we got to take movies seriously now so we can't do anything like that but I feel like that's the perfect mix of where I want a campy Indiana Jones adventure to be. Something like that. You have to keep the realism with an Indiana Jones movie, of course, but you can't go too far over the top. And I think that's fine. I mean, yeah, sure, the raft didn't like pop or anything, but that stuff like that is fine with me. And we have the best Indiana Jones sidekick ever in short round. K. Hai Kwan, before he was nominated for an Oscar and everything, everywhere, all at once, played short round in an Indiana Jones movie, and this kid is a delight. Stay behind me, short round. Step where I step. And don't touch anything. I step where you step. 
step. I touch nothing. Ah! Ah! Wow, holy smoke. Class landing. Short round. Step on it. Okie dokie, Dr. Joe's home on the potato. There's also another character in this movie that comes along for the ride that gets so much shit. I can make an analogy here that she is the Denise Richards of the Indiana Jones series. Because Denise Richards plays Christmas Jones in The World Is Not Enough. And she is unanimously considered the worst part of The World Is Not Enough. Kate Capshaw plays Willie, a club singer who gets dragged into this adventure by Indiana Jones and Short Round. And yes... She's annoying. However, these past couple rewatches, I haven't found her as annoying as I have in the past. And I feel like that that is something that's also over exaggerated. I've seen complaints that she screams a lot. And look, when she's when she's part of that voodoo ritual and she's like screaming, ah! she has every right to scream and be annoying there because I would probably do the same thing in that situation. I feel like she just doesn't have a lot of confidence in herself. I would say the only other scene where she's slightly annoying or at least starts to get on my nerves somewhat is the scene where after they have dinner with the Maharaja and they go through the wall, she has to reach into the wall to pull the lever so that Indy and Short Round can escape by the skin of their teeth and Indy's like, we're going to die! <laughs> are going to die and she's so afraid to pull the lever because there's a bunch of bugs there she doesn't want to touch the bugs and she's freaking out that's the one scene where i'm like okay maybe i see where the complaints are but for the rest of the movie for me i think she's tolerable and for a character like that it's at least touched upon in the movie not why she's so annoying but the characters themselves actually reference the fact that they want her to shut up, that she is annoying. And I, and you know, that's not really a defense for her being annoying, but I appreciate that the movie actually took the time to do that. That both Indy and Short Round were saying, look lady, shut up, you're annoying the hell out of us right now. So the movie actually addresses her annoyance. And I've been very critical of annoying characters in the past on this channel in many movies. I just think, I just think movies have to actually have the character stop take a minute and listen to what these characters are saying and then have those characters address the annoying character in the room. She's like the elephant in the room. Just like Raiders and just like Crusade, this movie's pace is immaculate. None of these movies feel like they are as long as they are. This is an hour and 58 minutes and like Raiders, it feels like it's 45 minutes. Things are constantly happening. The story keeps moving. New locations within this one country are discovered by Indy in Short Round. There's a great finale on a bridge. There's even a greater action scene that I am about to talk about and I can't wait to talk about it. It just keeps the adrenaline up for the entire movie, similar to Raiders. And when I talk about Crusade, I will take talk about the pacing in Crusade as well but this movie just like raiders with the truck chase and just like last crusade with the tank chase has one of the best action scenes ever put to film and my favorite action scene in an indiana jones movie yet the minecart chase holy shit this thing is exhilarating i love this action scene so much the pov shots make you as a viewer feel like you're on a high speed train or you're riding a roller coaster at disney world and it's going really fast and it's going out of control quite frankly watching that scene i really do not know how spielberg made that scene and how all the visual effects artists were able to perfect that for Spielberg to use, not CGI. We know that a lot of these Indiana Jones movies use practical effects and minimal CGI when they have to. It's so mind-blowing how they did that. Even though this movie was filmed in the 80s, they didn't have the technology to do something like that that we would today, where we can perfect that on a computer or we can perfect that on a big giant soundstage, probably at the Pinewood Studios and London or something, where you can do that. It's so crazy how Spielberg was able to film a five to six minute action sequence like that and make the entire thing look like it was 
filmed right on location that they were actually going down an actual mine shaft in a mine car being chased by the thuggy. So much fun. I love the back and forth. Love the different routes that the cars have to take in that sequence. It's just, it's so much fun. That's some of the most fun that I have watching an Indiana Jones movie. And really that scene is a big reason why I really love Temple of Doom, to be honest with you. It's a big factor as to why I've really, really come around. I've always loved that scene, but just knowing what comes before and then having that so late in the movie, I think is a big plus because you're still having fun with what comes before, but then you get to that and you're like, okay, here we go. This is the big one. And they save the biggest one for last. So Indy, Short Round, and Willie are able to escape, but Indy also has to have a final showdown with Mola Rom, and but it's not that great of a fight. It ends up with Mola Rom falling into the water and getting eaten alive by crocodiles. There is another criticism you could say about this movie. It's that Mola Rom's not that great of a villain. I, I get it, you know? I think he's a serviceable villain, but where I'm already having such a good time beforehand, I can overlook minimal development with a villain like that. As long as his plan is being carried out, he has motivation, and that plan by Indy gets gets thwarted at the end, and it does. I also love this shot of Indiana Jones run, running towards the camera and then him seeing all the thuggy guards and him running back. It's, it's so good. Temple of Doom is still top-notch filmmaking. I love this as much as Raiders. I love it as much as Crusade. It's Spielberg in his prime, and he really captures a lot of excitement. He keeps up that brisk pace in this movie, and the practical use of effects in this movie still completely boggle my mind today as to how they're done. With these old reviews, I have been giving letter grades, so I'm going to give Temple of Doom a letter grade, and it's going to surprise a lot of people because as I said, I love it as much as Raiders and Last Crusade. And I gave Raiders an A+. So that means I'm going to give Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom an A+. Yeah, guys. I mean, I, I was one of those people who I was like, yeah, it's a fun movie, but I don't love it. There's just, I don't know what it is. I Sometimes with movies, something just clicks where you just see something. And the more you watch something, you just fall in love with it. And I guess that that's my relationship with Temple of Doom. Like I, the, these past couple of watches, I've just, I've had more fun on these past couple of watches watching Temple of Doom than I have previously. So I think that that's also a big part of it. And I'm really looking forward to see if that keeps up in the future. So I remember the first time I watched it and I, when I fell in love with it, I was like, this better stay the same for me on the next time I rewatch it. And then when I recently rewatched them last year, it did. So, yeah, I mean, call me crazy for loving it as much as Raiders and Last Crusade. And I will talk about Last Crusade very soon. I will also talk about Kingdom of the Crystal Skull very soon. So stay tuned for those reviews. I have a big retrospective that I filmed in my old apartment with my cousins back in the summer that I haven't edited yet. It is going to be edited. That is going to be up probably the week before Dial of Destiny comes out. So I'm having a lot of fun talking about these Indiana Jones movies, and I might talk about another series or two leading up to a new release in those respective franchises as well. So I want to know your thoughts on Temple of Doom. Drop me those thoughts in the comments section below. I'll leave my link to my website in the description below as well. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex Madden, and I will see you at the movies somewhere. <laughs>